Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So for those of you guys that have watched any of my videos, I usually intro by saying that I've owned over 100 scopes, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, um, I thought it'd be kind of a cool and interesting video uh, to actually tell you, you know, some of the most memorable views that I have of actually owning 100 different scopes. All right, so just in case you're wondering, you know, what kind of inspired me to make this video, even after owning all those telescopes, I've had the dream of owning one scope that has kind of eluded me until now. Uh, recently, I picked up my dream scope. This is like the last one that I want, right? <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. Uh, but anyway, I picked up a 24-inch uh, premium daub. This thing's fully go-to. I'll do a video on it later once I have a chance to, you know, to use it more. Now, uh, the weather gods have really cursed me, you know, for buying this, such a, you know, like a uh, nice scope, right? I mean, we've had a few, you know, if you're in the Northwest area, you know, like recently, the spring of 2022 has been just absolutely terrible. We've had, you know, rain, more rain followed by more rain right <laughs> it's been cloudy like almost all the time so i haven't had a t you know terrible amount of time to use it but i did have had it out a few nights uh you know when it was nice and dark out here but anyway enough about the 24 inch let's get down to the list of some of the most memorable views that i've had i think this is going to be interesting for you know folks that are getting into visual observing or maybe you are you know like an advanced visual observer uh just to kind of you know like kind of run through some of the telescopes that you know i've had and uh you know kind of just like you know really kind of ingrained like you know some kind of a special view in my mind um now all of this stuff it's not like me going through notebooks or anything like that and looking up the these observations this is just stuff that's just really top of mind you know i sat down while it's been raining and cloudy and that type of deal um i made you know just this list kind of from memory just you know stuff that has really kind of stuck with me you know and this is you know from really kind of going back to when i got into the hobby in the early 2000s so this isn't just you know from like the last year or anything like that so anyhow got the list going on here so let's get to it all right, so one of the very like most memorable observations that I have is actually um, observing uh, the galaxy. It's called IC 1101. It's one of the biggest known galaxies uh, in the universe. Uh, it's over 1 billion uh, light years away. Um, and I had the chance to observe it from a dark sky star party uh, in central Oregon. I think this was probably like three or four years ago with my 18 inch daub that I had at the time. I mean, totally awesome. I mean, the thing was small. It was just, you know, like a small hazy spot. But it was totally amazing to see visually with your own eye, you know, light that has traveled 1 billion light years all right so next up on the list now uh, this is going back to when i was getting into the hobby i'm um, seeing uh stuff with the teleview 85 and then and, and in this particular case it was jupiter and saturn man i you know there's somewhere on the interwebs this is still probably you know out there i remember you know specifically posting that you know like because uh, the tv 85 back then that was you know my first kind of like you know really nice scope right um, and I remember posting that, you know, there's something special about my scope. It provides, you know, just really crisp, nice views of the planets. And man, you know, those views have kind of stuck with me of, you know, both Saturn and Jupiter with that scope, even though it was a small aperture, you know, it provided very nice crisp views. All right, so next up we have this. Uh, so a while ago I had a stellar view uh, 130 um, and that was a triplet, right? I didn't have like, you know, some kind of special lenses. I think they were just imported lenses from China that that one had, but it did have a nice feather touch three inch focuser. And man, you know, some of my most memorable views of observing Jupiter and Saturn are actually with that scope, uh, especially with the bino viewer. I mean, just some nice, really crisp views of that. Also, I'm observing the sun with the quark. That was my first experience. I actually bought the scope and the quark um, from the same guy. Um, so yeah, I had a chance to observe the sun with the quark. If you're not familiar, I'll post then like, you know, like a picture of what it looks like, but essentially allows you to observe uh, the sun with an H alpha with pretty much any refractor up to, I think like a seven inch. So really amazing views of the sun with that. All right, so next up, we have uh, observing the sun again with the batter Herschel wedge. I recently did a video about that, so check it out. Uh, uh, the scope that you know I primarily did that with was the uh, William Optics uh, 102 GT. It's a four-inch uh, APO, 
And um, yeah, just very crisp. I mean, some of the best, and actually not some of the best, the best images uh, that I've seen visually of sunspots with that setup. So with the four inch Apple and uh, the batter Herschel wedge, I mean, just very sharp, amazing views, especially of sunspots. I love it, love it. All right, so next up on the list, M42 with the 24 inch dub, right? <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Uh, so I know when I first got the scope right, Orion was still uh, out. This was a few months ago. So this is kind of like, you know, like early in the year. Um, and man, like the view that you get of M42, I mean, I've seen color in the, you know, in the nebula, like in my 16 and 18 inch dubs. With this thing, um, I've only had a chance to observe it from my, you know, my house, uh, which isn't, you know, like totally dark, but, you know, it's decently dark out here. Uh, it was a really great transparency on a few nights that I've had to observe. But man, I mean, the color is just amazing. The thing that really struck me is just the 3D nature of the center of M42 is, you know, kind of primarily what I was focusing on, you know, just kind of for obvious reasons. Um, and, you know, just the 3D nature of the nebula just becomes way more, you know, immersive in the scope. Um, also, I was just struck by the number of uh, stars that you see inside, embedded inside the nebula. I mean, it's just crazy. Even compared to like, you know, the 18 inch dub, I mean, this thing definitely pulls out way more of the stars that are kind of embedded in the nebula. And again, that whole 3D aspect of the nebula. I mean, I can't wait to see it from a truly dark sky site. Uh, with the, you know, nice transparent sky. So yeah, it's been a pretty amazing view. All right, so next up I have NGC 40 with my 12 inch EAA rig. So I'm gonna post in an image, you know, that's actually from SharpCap that I captured of it. Um, I remember the first time I seen, you know, this thing popped up on my screen for my scope, right? And I was just totally blown away at the detail that, you know, you could see and just the redness of the nebula. I mean, I remember very specifically, you know, sitting there at night. I don't know if I'd ever seen the, the object visually prior to that. Maybe I have, I don't know. Uh, that's kind of one of the things that I'm, you know, hopefully going to start working on is keeping like a good like diary or like notebook of my observations. I'm still, <laughs> still working on that. <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, um, yeah, I mean, seeing it on, you know, pop up on the screen, you know, of, uh, out of my observatory, I mean, it was totally awesome. This was from a light polluted sky back when I used to live in Vancouver. So yeah, I mean, totally cool. I mean, you know, the image kind of says it all. All right, so next up I have the moon with the Astrophysics 130 GT and the Denkmeyer Bino Viewer. Um, I mean, some of the best images that I remember seeing of the moon prior to getting the 24 inch dub is with that 130 GT. I mean, you know, astrophysics, optics, I mean, they're, you know, world that we now know as some of the best, you know, in the world, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, they really, really shine on the moon. I mean, just the detail is just totally etched. I mean, it looks almost like a fake image, you know, essentially, because it's just so darn sharp. So yeah, very, very memorable view of the moon. All right, so next up we have the jets out of um, M87. Again, that was done from Vancouver, from my light polluted backyard. Uh, with the EAA rig. So, I mean, I've actually tried to on several occasions uh, with my 16 inch, I think, to, to just try to see the jet visually. I have yet to see it. I think this thing, you know, probably will give me a decent chance uh, shot from like a dark sky side to actually see just, you know, purely visual. But with EAA, it was pretty easy to pull it out even under light pollution. I mean, totally cool, you know, to see something like that. It's a very small, fine detail, but, you know, like as the image is showing, it was totally there, so very cool. All right, so next up, I have M45 with the Mead 170ED. So that's the only seven-inch Apple that I've ever, you know, that I've had personally had a chance to own. And you know, one of the most memorable views that I've had of M45, uh, which is the Pleiades star cluster. If you're not familiar, I'll post an image of it right now, just in case if you've never seen it, but. Uh, yeah, it was with that scope, seven inches. It was from a totally dark sky site on Central Oregon again from a few years ago. Um, I remember those, you know, I brought out the scope when I first got it, you know, I pointed at M45. And, you know, the stars were just very nice, round and vivid, right? But the amount of nebulosity that I saw, 
it wasn't as bright as you know like the you know the picture that i posted in but i mean like most of it was there man i mean i could just totally pull it out with that scope there's something about refractors i don't know if it's probably the the you know the really good contrast that they have but they really pull out the details uh really well in like nebula and that type of deal all right, so the next thing, I'm gonna kind of combine these into one. So the moon with the 12-inch uh, advanced coma-free, 12-inch uh, SCT that I have out in the observatory, and the moon with the 24-inch uh, daub here. So um, with both scopes, I mean, I saw crazy amounts of detail on the moon. Um, so earlier I said that one of the best views that I've had of the moon um, uh, was with the Astrophysics 130 GT. That's kind of more from like an aesthetical perspective, you know, as far as actually seeing detail in like small craterlets and, you know, just kind of really using powers that are, you know, pretty crazy out here in the Northwest. I'd say, you know, like three, four hundred, even five hundred X. Yeah, it's been with the bigger scopes on, night, of night, on nights of good scene. I've got like a really good star atlas that um, I've I've used that at the observatory with the 12 inch to where I mean I was able to see detail that are just crazy fine I mean there's no way a five inch you know Apple would you know be able to burn stuff like that and you do have to have a good scene uh, if you have nice optics which you know this scope actually has very premium optics my 12 inch uh, advanced coma free SCT I've actually went through I believe four of them and that's the best one you know out of the batch that I've had so very you know good optics and that so yeah the moon with the big scope on the scene is good i mean it's just it's just spectacular all right so next up i have m76 that's the little dumbbell nebula with the uh jmi bino 16 inch i don't know what it is about that scope um you know some some objects they look pretty good even though it's a 16 inch binocular right i'm posting an image of what the scope looks like right now just in case you're not familiar but anyhow for some reason the m76 it's by far the best view i've ever had of the nebula i mean you could see, you could see the you know familiar dumbbell shape but then you could also see the outer envelope of the nebula i mean it was just totally like i'd say almost full like you know the detail that you could see with that scope on that particular nebula again i'm not sure why some stuff didn't really look that impressive in that scope but that nebula it was just you know it was the right scope for the for the object all right so next up we have you know kind of a simpler observation and you know this probably goes down to um proving that several factors can add up to just an amazing observation so i had uh, a few years ago probably like five years ago a mac uh, seven inch uh orion right and um i was looking at the double double with the scope so those scopes you know a seven inch mac uh, they take a while to cool down it's fully cooled down that night the scene was good on that particular night. i remember um i looked at the double double this is you know the double do the famous double double in lyra and i mean the stars were just absolutely textbook perfect i mean they were just nice little orb with a little airy disc around them i mean just amazing i mean typically i just associate apos with you know providing you those type of images of double stars but on this particular night the mac i mean like honestly that's the best view i've ever had of a double star so kind of a simple observation but um you know it just really kind of stuck in my you know in my brain of just how perfect all four stars look like. I mean, just like a really textbook presentation. So that's really awesome. All right, so um, I'm going to post in an image of uh, the next thing. So that was observing Saturn and Jupiter uh, with the Mead 170 ADD. You know, usually I'd use this chair that I'm sitting on, right? I'd kind of set it up and observing them in a straight through mode with the uh, 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 Binotron, Binoviewer. I mean, really cool views. It's very relaxing. I mean, there's just something about, you know, I mean, the views were amazing of the plants, but there's just something about, you know, sitting under that big, huge refractor, right? <laughs> and just kind of looking at the planets. So really cool views with, you know, with that whole setup. Love it. All right, so next up, I've got uh, just general deep sky observing with the APM uh, 102 uh, binoscope. I mean, I don't know what it was about that bino, man. Like, um, under my, you know, against semi dark sky side, I mean, some of the really brighter objects just really, really popped, you know, with that scope. So, some really memorable views. I mean, nothing like in particular, but just pretty much any deep sky object that I looked at, it just looked really nice with that scope. So, yeah, that was a really cool uh, experience. 
All right, so this is kind of going back in time again. The North American Nebula with the Teleview 85. I remember this very vividly. It's kind of a cool story. I forget, I might have already told it, but um, so basically, I used to go to star parties down in Sacramento when I was a member of the club there when I used to live there, back there uh, in the early 2000s. Uh, and I remember, you know, back then, you know, I was pretty young. I was like 20, you know, or so years old. And I remember, you know, I got the scope right. I had the 31 millimeter Nagler. I had, you know, I think probably like an O3 filter or something like that, right? And I was talking to some of the older guys there and they're like, oh yeah, we've tried to see the North American Nebula and you know, it's hard, blah, 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 really dim, which, you know, it kind of is. Um, and I remember, you know, I just pointed my little Teleview, you know, three inch uh, Apo uh, at the North American Nebula with the 31 millimeter Nagler the O3 filter and then just there it was I mean you could see like the whole like North American continent kind of outline and it was just really cool and I'm you know I'm talking to the guys right they were just telling me that they never seen it in like you know 20 30 years of observing and I'm like I think you know it's right there and then they look at it and they were just totally blown away that this puny little scope was showing you know the North American nebula clear as day almost I mean it was really cool very cool uh, experience very memorable story all right, so M13 with 18-inch uh, dob and uh, Binotron, Bino Viewer. As you kind of notice, like a lot of these observations that are really memorable are actually with observing with two eyes, you know, just throwing it out there. But <laughs> uh, yeah, so M13, you know, it's the biggest, brightest uh, globular cluster, you know, that's easily seen from the northern atmosphere, uh, hemisphere anyway. Uh, yeah, with that 18 inch setup from a dark sky site, I mean, totally amazing. I'm sure that this thing will do even better, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the there's a few objects that I'd say look better visually than they do with like in pictures, and globular clusters are definitely one of them. Open clusters are actually another one, which brings us to the next object, and that is the double cluster uh, in Perseus through the Tech 140 and the 30 millimeter 100 degree uh, eyepiece. I've got like a whole article written up on this, uh, about this, you know, kind of observing uh, experience on my blog. So if you're curious, check it out. But anyway, yeah, with that eyepiece, the double clusters, I mean, you know, the Apple, the 140 um, millimeter, I mean, it pulls in like a really good, nice, colorful image of uh, open star clusters, high contrast. You've got that amazing field of view with that particular eyepiece combo, three inch eyepiece. Uh, so yeah, very, very, very cool. All right, and now we get to the last observation. And this one might surprise you, I, I saved the best for last. But actually one of the most memorable observations that I've had like ever, was I remember uh, this is back again in Sacramento when I was a kid, you know, I think I was like 12 or 13 years old. I got my first telescope, right? And that was a Tasco 60 millimeter. I remember opening the thing up, setting it up. Unfortunately, I, I, may, I might have pictures of it somewhere, but uh, I don't know where that'd be. Uh, but anyway, I remember setting the thing up, right? And I took it out and it was kind of a, you know, like semi cloudy night that night. But I remember pointing it at the moon through the clouds, right? And just seeing my first view of the moon through a telescope as a kid. I mean, it's just totally etched in my brain. I mean, you know, I'm sure that right now if I looked at the moon with that telescope, I wouldn't be hyper impressed. But back then, I mean, it just totally blew my mind and I was just totally hooked on the hobby. So anyhow, hopefully you guys found this interesting. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, if you guys want to share a really memorable view that you've had through one of your scopes, you know, please post them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please again do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.